Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to show you some of my more rare locality boas that I'm really fortunate to have in my collection. In the years ahead, I hope to produce some more of these beautiful rare animals, so hopefully they won't be so rare in the hobby. If you want to learn all about keeping and breeding boas in captivity, be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of my future boa videos. First off, in the grand scheme of things, almost all locality boas are quite rare in captivity. Even the more commonly seen types of locality boas, like the Suriname True Red Tails and the Hog Island boas, we might be talking about just a small handful of litters that are produced worldwide every year. The boas I'm going to talk about today are only produced at most every few years. In fact, some of these localities, there's only a small number of individuals worldwide that have them in their collections, maybe as few as three or four. And I don't know exactly how many, but most of these localities I'm going to show you, these aren't animals that we see every year for sale. Sometimes it's only every few years. In the future, I hope to produce babies of these rare localities so that more boa hobbies can work with them and hopefully they won't be so rare in people's boa collections. The first rare locality boa that I want to share with you is called the Honduran Firebelly Boa. And this is a line of boas that was established by the breeder Dennis Sargent about 20 years or so ago. And he got a shipment of imported boas, which supposedly came from the island of Roatan in the Caribbean off the coast of Honduras. And he selected some of these boas that had this really bright orange reddish belly. And he bred from these boas to establish the hunter and fire belly line. And he produced them for a few years, but then unfortunately he got out of boa breeding and he sold them all off. Uh, and you know, it's not entirely clear where all these boas ended up. So I know that um, Joel and Orlando Diaz of Legacy Reptiles got some of them and you know they bred them and that's actually where my breeders originated i believe uh, they're the last people that i've seen breed them and i think their last litter at legacy reptiles was around 2015. Um, so i had two litters of hunter and fire bellies i had my first litter in 2018. this is a holdback female from that litter and this animal illustrates the characteristics of the hunter and fire belly so first of course the reddish orange belly they have this kind of uh, olive brownish color to them and with darker saddles. And then they have a really cool head shape. They have these really short, stocky heads and these really large reddish brown eyes. Really striking looking head shapes on these animals. The tail is typically has blotches of kind of a dark maroonish color. And then they're often patternless. So, this particular hole back, you can see she's got saddles on the front half of her body, and then she's got this patternless stripe on the posterior half of her body. Really a striking looking boa. So this is a two-year-old female. I actually bred them again the year after my first litter, back in 2019, and everything looked great, and the female was approaching her due date. And then unfortunately, for reasons I don't understand, she dropped the litter about two weeks premature. And unfortunately, there were 13 babies, but only two of them survived. So it was really a heartbreaking situation. But, you know, sometimes that's part of breeding boas. So my breeders aren't breeding this year, but I plan on breeding them again in next year. So hopefully I'll have some more Honduran Firebelly babies in uh, 2021. But these are very rare locality boa. Um, the future is kind of uncertain because it's such a small group of breeding animals in captivity. You know, the original group was not that large. So it would be important to somehow uh, uh, introduce some new genetic stock, maybe from uh, Roatan Island boas, in order that we will be able to perpetuate these Honduran Firebelly boas uh, for long term in the future in captivity. The second rare locality boa I want to share with you is the Corn Island boa. And this is a dwarf locality boa from an island off of the coast of Honduras known as the Corn Islands. And these animals are quite unique both uh, behaviorally and uh, morphologically. So looking at their body, they have this really unusual color, this kind of olive greenish uh, top half of their body. 
The belly and sides have a lot of orange and red color to them. And then behaviorally, they're a very active boa. They never like to sit still very much. They're always moving around and exploring and, you know, not an animal that likes to sit still. Handling them is more like handling a colubrid like a king snake than handling a boa. So these animals are pretty rare. Um, there's a few breeders working with them. My pair came from Tommy Carpenter. Uh, this is uh, the male. He's uh, six years old. But overall, there's not too many breeders with these animals. And I only see animals available for sale once in a while, certainly not every year. So hopefully more people will get interested in these very unique boas and start producing more Corn Island boas so they can be enjoyed more widely in the boa hobby. Next, I wanted to show you a rare true red-tailed boa, boa constrictor constrictor. And this is probably the rarest locality of true red tail that I have. And it's called the Tomatama Venezuela red tail boa. So these animals are from a small village by the name of Tomatama, which is at the confluence of the Orinoco and Casacuari rivers in southern Venezuela. And they were established by the crocodilian uh, expert, Terry Cullen. This is a six year old male. So you can see he's quite small. And then overall the coloration is pretty striking. They have this golden yellow color, not unlike a Peruvian boa. Um, the shape of the head, you can see is different. It's kind of a little bit shorter than most true red tail boas. And also the size is smaller. So this guy has uh, peak saddles. My female has uh, round saddles. My female is maybe, I don't know, about a foot and a half longer than this guy. This guy is maybe four feet. But still, these Venezuelan red tails are pretty small for true red tail boas. So there are some other types of Venezuelan red tails available. I mean, all Venezuelan red tails are rare, but the more commonly seen ones are the Rio Bravo bloodline that's of unknown origin within Venezuela. And these are fairly similar to those. Um, a little bit different. Um, these guys, I tried to breed them this year. Unfortunately, it didn't take. It looked like the male was interested in the female, and I observed some copulation behaviors, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, the female didn't get pregnant. So I'm going to try again next year with these guys, and hopefully I can produce some of these rare Tomatama Venezuela true red tail boas, so that the rest of you guys have the opportunity to enjoy them in your collection. Let's have a look at one more type of rare locality boa. This is an, an, another animal that originated in Venezuela. This is the Paraguana Peninsula or Paraguanera boa. And these animals are from the Paraguana Peninsula in northern Venezuela. They're technically classified as boa imperator, although they do show a lot of similarities to the boa constrictor constrictor, the true red tail boas that occur in the southern part of the country. They're kind of a really cool animal that shows characteristics of both the common boa and the true red tail. So looking at this animal, you can see the really cool pattern with the high contrast. The tail is kind of long and kind of dark red in color, but then the shape of the head is a little bit shorter and stockier than what you would see in a true red tail. So they're a really cool animal can see he likes to hold on there. They're a really cool animal that is kind of a link between true red tail boas and common boas. But these animals are a dwarf form of boa. This guy is about five years old and he's maybe four feet long. Um, they're a really cool boa. One of my favorites. They don't move around a whole lot. They like to kind of hold on. They're probably one of the more squeezy locality boas. Um, but they have a really cool pattern and just a really cool look to them. I am planning on pairing up my pair uh, next year. And with any luck, I hopefully will be able to produce some of these Peregrinera uh, Venezuela boas. One other really cool thing about the Peregrinera boas is that there's a naturally occurring morph that's specific to the Paraguanera boa locality. And that's the anerythristic Paraguanera boa. And so these animals are lacking the red pigment. So they have this silvery 
uh, gray color. This is my female. Uh, she's uh, about a year younger than the male I just showed you. I've been getting out my male anerythristic peregrine narabo a lot in videos. It's definitely one of my favorites. So I thought I'd show you the female today. The female maybe isn't quite as silvery appearing. She's maybe a little bit more brown, but still a beautiful animal. And you can see her white belly contrasts quite nicely with her darker body color. Uh, so the Peregrinera anerythistic boas. I'm not going to be pairing these guys up next year, but maybe the following year I'll pair these guys up and if all things go as planned, hopefully I'll have some anerythristic Peregrinera boas uh, to offer. So if you're interested in working with one of these rarer localities of boa, and it certainly would be good to have more people breeding them to hopefully increase their numbers in captivity, it's a good idea to research just exactly who's working with them and keep an eye out for future litters because again these animals typically aren't available every year and it might be a span of several years between when someone has a captive born litter of these animals. Um, sometimes you can get lucky and someone is getting out of boa breeding and has some nice rare animals to offer. But that doesn't happen that often. So if you want to work with these rarer types of locality boas, it pays to be prepared and plan ahead. So I hope this video was helpful. I have videos on each of these different types of rare locality boas, as well as many other not so rare locality boas. So if you want to learn more about any of these individual locality boas, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to me or leave them below and enjoy your boas.